life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And welcome. And welcome. <laughs> we are going to talk about our top 10 books for October. As we are filming this, it is Halloween. So happy Halloween to you all. Belatedly. <laughs> Since... I mean, you're going to get this a couple days after. Right. Yeah. yeah but, you know, we got to produce it. That's correct. This month, we're going to talk about what we read in October. Basically, my top five books and... Uh, my only five books. <laughs> October was a weird month. October was a really difficult month for me, actually. I don't very frequently DNF books, but I DNF'd a book after I got a good ways in. And I started another book that I really like, but then I had to stop and read another one. And uh, uh, Yeah, we'll talk about that uh, later. We'll get there. Yeah, but what I will say is one of the reasons why it was a little uh, difficult more for, for us to read, I did read... But basically my lowest, I read 13 books this month, which actually seems a little bit tell yeah, like yeah. appropriate, 13 mm. books during the scary month, right? But I will say that the reason why is because we did take a vacation. We went to St. Augustine for a couple days. And while you think it's vacation, I'm going to read more, that doesn't seem to be the case unless no. you're like really have nothing better to do with your time than sit on a cruise ship or something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> I really read... Next to nothing during my vacation. Yeah, I didn't really either. I was too busy carting other people around, I feel like. <laughs> you liked it. There was a lot of fun to be had. Right. So if you guys are interested in seeing more about our trip to St. Augustine, I do have the pictures on my Instagram at Zany Laney if you want to check out more. It's actually right now we have a lot of pictures going up, but we are looking for other places. I think we're kind of St. Augustine out now. We've been going for yeah. quite some time. Some people have suggested Savannah. That is very high on our list. I think next to go. I have also seen some things about Tarpon Springs, Florida, which seems to be also another like on a beachy community, but it's on the Gulf side, which okay. I don't think I've ever actually been in the Gulf water. I think I've just been to the Gulf. Okay. If that makes sense. So there's some. Let me know if you Florida or Georgia people need to tell me what you think. Also, one more thing is if you are interested in any of the books that I personally have read of the 13 this month, the reviews always go up on my Instagram and TikTok. You can get both of them there at Zany Laney as well. And you're going to get some other reviews as well for those things that she didn't read, but I did. I'm just going to hand that off to her so she can play with that. <laughs> All right. I think that because Marshall basically only read five books, <laughs> he should start off. This was kind of a, a, a month where I didn't even have a five star for this month. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it, it just. But you it, would have if you had finished. I feel like if you had finished Good Girl, Bad Blood, you would yes, have gotten a five star. I would have. But maybe next month. Okay, so my number five was Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. Now, this has nothing to do with the movie of Camp Slaughter. It just shares a name with it. It happens at a camp. That's the other thing. And there is slaughter. There, there is much slaughter. This is the story of, hey, there's this abandoned camp out in the woods, and there's a cannibal that lives in the camp. And then everybody's like, hey, you know what we should do? We should totally go to this cannibal camp for no reason, except we're teenagers. Yay! <laughs> We had to read this because the book club that we're in was reading it as one of their monthly reads, right? Correct. And I said on, on my review there, I give this two stars because one star means I DNF'd it and I don't do 1.5. I could probably go off on a rant on how this could have been done better because there's elements that are good right. to this book. There really is. And if you are a fan of slashers and you don't care about plot, you just want to see people get dismembered, go for it. The chapters are really short, and it reads very quickly, so the pacing is great, but I did not enjoy the plot or the characters or anything else. I'm so sorry. So what is your number five? Well, my number five is actually a book called Dial A for Aunties. It's by Jesse Q. Sutanato. I think that's how you say it. Mm. I got this book because I really liked Arsenic and Adobo, which was yeah. kind of like a, a Filipino murder mystery. And 
I had heard that this book was a lot like that in tone. It is more about the China Indo culture and it is basically the story of a girl who gets set up on a blind date and because the guy is basically making untoward advances toward her, she kind of freaks out, tasers him, he crashes into a tree and dies. <laughs> <laughs> so she has to like figure out how to deal with this but of course she's got like her mom and like four aunties and they all run this like wedding service where each aunt had does a, a certain thing so one does hair and makeup yeah. one does flowers one does the cake but like they have a wedding that next day and it's on this island right so they're trying to figure out how to get rid of the body it's not a murder mystery per se because you know exactly like what happens to him but there is a mystery element in this book it's just not murder okay yeah, from so. what i was reading it was kind of more of a comedy of errors yes <laughs> than anything else and you know that's that's good fun story you know mm -hmm. you get a little bit of a break from all the heavy mystery and stuff like right, that. right which is why i wanted to read it it was it was just a real good time it was a lot of fun there is a sequel coming out next year which is why i got it mixed up with arsenic and adobo because that one is coming out with a mm. sequel next year as well but i feel like if you just want a good fun time you want to learn more about the culture because in this wedding it is from their culture as well mm -hmm. so uh there was a lot about like the gifts that are supposed to be given during a wedding and things like that i thought it was kind of an interesting background so i i give it four stars because i really i thought it was a good time it was kind of yeah, a break yeah. from all these other kind of more scary spooky books that i had been reading all month so definitely recommend if you are if you like that kind of mystery book excellent my number four was Watching You by Lisa Jewell. <laughs> now, okay, guys, we had actually had this thought of doing a Jewel January mm -hmm. and having a full thing where we just go through our favorite Lisa Jewell. I had never read Lisa Jewell before we decided to do this. So she's like, why don't you go ahead and start reading them? So I started with Watching You, which, you know, really wasn't bad. Yeah. Like, I give this three stars. I think I gave it three stars. I read it last month. And... This is the story of a community area. Yeah. You have a school teacher. You have his son. You have a woman who has been kind of uh, going around through different jobs in her life and is currently working at some sort of kid's place. Right. And then you've got a few other characters. And there is obviously someone who died here. Mm -hmm. We just don't exactly know who it is and right. how it happened. Because it does like a flashback so at the beginning it it shows you that someone died but then it flashes back to mm -hmm. other things that happened to kind of like bring you up to that yeah point. and there's chapters interspersed that are like the different people talking to the police kind of giving them their mm -hmm. and you kind of get the feeling like one person is being blamed for all of it it is a mystery it is more of a thriller mm -hmm. I, I would say, say domestic thriller yeah. yeah it's a domestic thriller and it wasn't bad but then I was going to get started on another Lisa Jewel, and unfortunately, I just couldn't because it felt like it was the exact same thing all yeah. over again. I mean, I had read An Invisible Girl before. It is different than watching you, but when I started reading the next book that we were going to, I think it was Then She Was Gone or something like that. That's the one that I Yeah, I, I, I got to the same place where I was like, this feels like the same book and I don't have time for this. So I think we scrapped the mm -hmm. Lisa Jewell idea. Very sad. I'm still going to read Then She Disappeared, which is her latest book because I just want to see if there's any other different, but you know, we are not doing jewel january but we have other things planned yes yeah. we do i'm so sorry yeah <laughs> it happens all right my number four i'm actually really excited to talk about it is called all of us villains it is by amanda foodie and christine lynn herman so it is basically i would describe it as a hunger games but with magic because there are these seven magical families and in order to control magic, they do a tournament where they have one, like, I would say child because they have to be young. They have to be like tournament age. They are training their entire life to be in this tournament and they learn how to do specific kind of magic and it's a fight to the death and whoever wins, their family gets to control magic. 
it is very underhanded and shifty and there's a lot of other stakes that start happening. The book is a very slow burn. I almost DNF'd it about 30% of the way through. But I'm very glad I did not because, oh, it gets so good at the end. And little old me didn't know that this was actually a series. So when I get to the mm-hmm. end, I'm like, wait, what? What is that ending? She oh, was so gosh. mad. I was so mad. So be forewarned. Series. Cliffhanger. Horrible cliffhanger. Okay? I, I just, I cannot wait for the next one, but it's so good. So please, just be forewarned. Those two things are the reason why I gave it a four stars. The burn is slow, but stick with it. The payoff is good. I'm going to be honest. I am planning on reading this book, but I will probably wait until the next one comes out. (laughs) Just for that reason. Yeah. Hunger Games as a concept is just a really fun story. Yeah. And I like magic. There you go. Like, mm-hmm. if you were to take this concept and blend it with the Scalamat series, h- how could you not succeed? Well, see, what's really interesting about this magic that I have never seen done before is that the magic, while it is inherently in them, they have like a well of their own magic. The magic can only be dealt, the spells can only be dealt through rings. Mm-hmm. stones so a lot of times they have to wear the rings in order to cast the spell they, they have and to channel if, the magic from another world right spread. so if the rings only have a specific amount of the spell in it the rings are no longer able to be used or they break or whatever and it's there's just a finite amount of magic that each person has Mm -hmm. so it's it's i thought it was kind of cool that i had never really seen magic that way because a lot of people say well you know i have magic and i have i have magic i can do x amount of spells right like i can do the lower level spells or i can do the upper level spells but to actually have their magic deplete and not be able to be used in a setting where it's life or death was was just great yeah. to me. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, it's not just spells per day. Mm-hmm. It's charges on a wand. Basically. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Number three was Heroes by Stephen Fry. Now, Stephen Fry has been doing this series, and you've probably heard me talking about it before, of his Mythos series, where he goes through all the Greek myths. Mm-hmm. And so I've already done Mythos, mm-hmm. which is about the origins of the gods and all that stuff. And I've already done Troy, which is the end of Greek myth. But this is in between. This is a story of Heracles and... No, his name was not Hercules. It was Heracles. <laughs> um, that, that, was a, that was our own mistranslation of his name. But there is a whole bunch of other myths and stories of humans or half-human heroes that would go around doing all sorts of awesome stuff. And this was a very entertaining read just because of Stephen Fry's own comedic bent and how he voices the characters. I'm kind of weirded out by just how many of these ancient Greeks have Scottish accents (laughs) because he also does the voice acting. And this was one that, since we couldn't find it, in Libby, we couldn't find it on any other system. Lainey had actually gone and gotten it for me on Libro as a gift. And now I've finally gotten through all of these Greek myths. I'm very excited. Although, although I think they also have the Odyssey left to do. Mm. I think that's the last chunk of it because the Odyssey comes after the Trojan War. So you really do like this whole series that he does. I have always loved Greek myth. I've loved studying mythology and other religions and cultures ever since I was young. And so seeing it all kind of compiled together like this in a comedic way and a very well voice act and an extremely well researched way, he really gets down into the nitty gritty of how he came about his plot because Greek myth doesn't agree with itself most of the time. Mm. If you go to a different source, the story is completely different. So he's he tells you how he comes about. It's very well researched, very well done. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Awesome. My number three book was actually the very first book I read this month, and it is called Daughter of the Deep. It's by Rick Riordan. I really liked the Percy Jackson series, so I I know that Rick Riordan had came out with like some 
other books, some anthologies that I have read recently, but this one seemed really like unique because it's based on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And I wouldn't even say it's loosely based. It is almost a companion book to that because it talks about how there's a there's like two schools and they are trained in the writing of Jules Verne and in the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea universe. They take parts of that lore and they made, you know, a school. But the main character, she has something really traumatic happen to her before where her parents had died. So she and her brother are going to the school and then something else traumatic happens to her and she finds herself on a submarine with her classmates trying to find some secret hideout for reasons that I will not tell you, but I really enjoyed this book. There is a dolphin that is so cute. There are also other creatures of the deep that are very bright and have lots of character to them. And it is also a series, so excited to continue this one as well. What do you think of this? That sounds really interesting. Like, okay, I've never read any of the Percy Jackson or anything else by Rick Riordan. I have watched the movies of Percy Jackson, and they were generally entertaining. I actually do kind of like the concept of taking the old myths and other old stories and kind of giving them new life. So I'm, I may at some point go for it, but my TBR list is a, getting a little long. So I actually I, I, have, um, I believe, at least one of the Percy Jacksons. I'm not sure. But I will say that I like the Percy Jackson books better than I like the movies. The movies are fine, but the books are just... The detail is great on those. Yeah, I felt like the movies were like, yeah, we we're going to take this really good story and we're going to use it as an excuse for lots of CGI. <laughs> I could see that. Yep. My number two was Winter Set Hollow by Jonathan Edward Durham. Now, if you like reading really old American classics like The Great Gatsby or Catcher in the Rye, you know, those, those kinds of books that are very flowery language, multi-layered, lots of depth to it, you will love this book. I enjoyed this book. And those books, nah, not necessarily my cup of tea. Like, if it's too dense, I can't read it. Right. This book, for me, was kind of difficult, but still enjoyable. Mm -hmm. The plot line of this is that there's these people that have been reading a book that is almost like Wind in the Willows. It's called Winterset Hollow, and it's about this community of animals that lose all their food for one season and go to war with the buffalo that stole them and it's like their favorite they love this book they go on over to the island that was once owned by the author of this book that author has been long dead and they get there and find that the characters of the book that are animals are living in the house mm -hmm. and they are human-sized anthropomorphic animals and they're like hey welcome humans we're about to have our feast that's like the whole point of the book, right? Come on, join us for this feast. Now run. Yeah, all of this is told in the summary as well. Mm -hmm. Nothing has been given away. I do have to come in and say that we were approached by the author. That's uh, jo Jonathan Edward Durham. He did approach us to review this book for him. So we did. When I read the synopsis, I thought, ooh, this book is going to be right at Marshall's Alley. It's mm -hmm. fantasy. It's you know, weird animals. The cover is a little nightmarish, if I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's like, woo! <laughs> and the book is broken up into four parts. Each one of them has an image that's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. This book, all of the major characters, the animals and the three main human characters, I enjoyed them all. Mm. Yes, the animals are trying to kill them. I don't care. The animals were actually really good characters with lots of depth. And lots of personality and emotion to them, you felt for them. You didn't necessarily want them to do what they were doing, but you felt for them. You said that it was kind of symbolic of something, right? Yes, this book, 
I, I could definitely see this as being a commentary on cultural appropriation, on the treatment of indigenous people in the Americas. Mm-hmm. Like you could really go, that's what, what this is all about. Mm-hmm. And even if you were to take these animal characters and turn them into First Nations tribes people, the story would not change. But by putting them in these animal characters, it's made it a little bit more fantastical. A little right. that's one of the things that fantasy and sci-fi is always really good for. You you shift the mirror just a little bit and the issue you are talking about can become a little bit more palatable to people who are inured to it. So what did you, what rating did you end up giving in the book? I did end up giving this a four star and it's just because it is so deep and multi-layered in its writing that it was difficult for me to read. Mm-hmm. It took me a long time. And I'm going to be honest, guys, I finished it at two o'clock last night. <laughs> but like I said, it's beautiful and the characters are good. Mm-hmm. My number two book is actually a surprise to me. It is a five star read. I bought it over a year ago on like a, you know, it was like a one ninety nine two ninety nine Kindle deal. People have been talking about it and I was like, sure, this sounds like a good read. All right. And then some people that I follow on YouTube that I'm actually friends with read it, didn't like it. So it kind of got shoved to the bottom of my TBR list. All right. So then I'm going to tell you what this book is in a minute. So then I'm doing a like a book challenge in book club and I needed to read a book with some geometric shapes on the cover. And someone recommended this book said it was so good. And I went, all right, I actually have this book. I'm going to read it. I'll finally read it. And that is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This book was the biggest surprise to me this month. I absolutely loved this book. I could not put it down. It is the story of a guy who wakes up with no memory of what he is, who he is, where he is. And all he has is one name in his head, and that is Anna. He hears a woman scream. He's in the woods. He doesn't know what's happening. He thinks to himself, this woman is being killed. So he goes to try to find her and can't. And through a course of many things, finds himself at this manor in the home that Evelyn Hardcastle lives in. And he is told that every day he will wake up in a different person's body. And his job is to figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle and why. Now, he gets an entire week to figure it out. Okay, so it's like seven different people. But he is also told that it's kind of a competition. And there are two other rivals in the house with him, but they have to get their memory cleared at the end of every day. So it's a little bit different stakes. Also, they're being stalked and can be killed inside their bodies. Okay, there are time jumps, kind of. There are the mystery that you're putting it together. Like I never got confused who he was in, what was happening, the chronological order of it all. I, I never, never got confused at all. This book is, if you are loving mysteries, this book just, yes, all all the yes. Yeah. From the descriptions, it's a closed room mystery that everybody's saying, well, Agatha Christie would love this sort of thing. And, I, I think the general concept of it is really interesting. Yeah. I love the idea of jumping around to different, like a character jumping to different perspectives. Mm-hmm. But I also like that the, the story is resetting every time or they're supposedly yeah, resetting. Yeah, every day. So every day it does reset, even when he's in a different person. So what's interesting about this is like day one, he sees things happen that he has no explanation for. And he's like, why did that person maybe behave that way and then he realizes later on when he is that person what motivated that person to do what they needed to do does that make sense so it kind of all becomes clear as he goes yeah i I remember an rpg that was like this actually yeah 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 so you are interested in this book yes oh very much so yes Mm -hmm. so yes it It sounds really good yes okay number one book marshall going on to number one okay 
this one kind of had an advantage. She's she's looking at the list right now, and she knows exactly what that advantage was. Yep. And it was, this is Dresden Files, War Cry. This is a comic book, so it wasn't all that long. <laughs> but also, it's like your top two favorite things. Yeah, it's Dresden Files. Come on. <laughs> it's set in the middle of the series during the huge vampire war, and Dresden is going to a house with all of his rookie wardens. They are just freshly minted. They have no idea really how to fight in a war with vampires. And they get to this house and it turns into a huge standoff when a whole bunch of vampires come in. And he's like, why are these vampires here? What do they want with this place? What is nobody telling me? In typical Dresden fashion. So... He has to figure out what's going on here while fending off the vampires, while dealing with the fact that his own people are trying to kill him too. It's it's definitely an action comic. It went quickly. It was fun. And it, I just enjoy seeing dressed in a lot of things. <laughs> this is back when he was a little more hopeful. Oh, gosh. I really have nothing to say about yeah. this. <laughs> you have never even touched the Dresden Files. No, I have not. I have only watched the TV show, so... Yeah, and I'm going to be honest. I don't think many of the books are really going to be up your alley. Yes, they are mysteries, mm-hmm. but they're detective noir with magic. Yeah, I'm very particular when it comes to both mystery and fantasy books, so this one is just, yeah. Yeah, not, it's just a combination of the two things that just didn't wheelhouse. work out no. for you. But I will tell you what my, my number one book for the month was. It was given to me as a birthday present. I was very excited to read it. It is the third book in the Good Girls series, which is called As Good as Dead. So we're going to wind up that series about Pippa and her true crime podcast. Apparently there was a fourth book, but it's a prequel book. Right. I haven't heard a lot about that one. I think I glanced at it kind of briefly, but I think this book, unless they can find another angle, really wraps up what's happening. Although I will say the way that it ends, oh, this book kind of ripped me up. Okay. Let's, let me just tell you what it's about. Pippa, in this third book, she is about to go off to college and she feels that She needs a palate cleanser murder cold case to solve so that she can feel better about the PTSD that she's experiencing from book two, which I cannot tell you what happens obviously there because Marshall has not finished this book yet. I am partway into it. Book two, but she does get PTSD from what happens. So she decides she's going to try to find a cold case, but instead starts getting a stalker and it is legitimately creepy that this stalker because as in true that what happens in this book there are pictures of things there are file cases there are some that are like Blair Witch style creepy okay and when you find out who it is which you actually find out pretty early on who it is that's doing it and what she has to go through it's heartbreaking her relationship with Ravi is still strong But, oh my gosh, it's just, you get to the end of this book and you're like, but, oh, that's so bittersweet. I I, I can't, ah, the emotional roller coaster. I I wish there was a fourth book that takes place after this. From a lot of the reviews, and I don't really read deeply into the reviews to try and stay away from spoilers, but a lot of them are saying, you know, Pippa's story arc is just beautiful here. Mm. Ravi went from being perfect to being even more perfect, if that's possible. Oh, yeah. So it's just really good character I mean, if you ever... Okay, as a girl, if you ever had a boyfriend who basically did not bat an eye when you tell him the worst thing that could possibly happen, and he says to you, all right, let's go take care of it, not blinking an eye, almost to the point where he's there for you in every sense of the word. Like, that's what Ravi is in this book. He just continues to be this really great supportive guy. 
And I'm so glad that they never turned him into, like, secret stalker. Like, no, I would have been so angry if that had yeah. happened. Like, so angry. And when I compare it to Truly Devious with Nate, Nate so he yeah. turns out to be kind of a little jerky yeah. in, in the last book, and I don't really like that. But this was, like, the complete opposite of that. You know, this the way their relationship was is, like, hashtag relationship goals, right? Like... She is very flawed and she doesn't know how to have a relationship exactly, but he does. And he kind of teaches her. Through Which this is whole thing. also kind of strange when you look at their family situations. Like her family is really supportive and well adjusted and, you know, there for her. They, they could teach her these things. Whereas Ravi's family is after the death of his brother is broken. Right. And to see how he has come out of that more socially adept than mm-hmm. she is is really interesting. Yeah. That that what I love about this book is the complexities of the characters mm-hmm. and just really their backstory and how there are people that are in, you know, book 2 that in book 1 that you will see as they do not like Pippa. They blame Pippa for a lot of things. Understandable. Uh, yeah, understandably. But these same people can maybe change their outlook mm-hmm. on what is happening and grow in their in themselves and how they approach certain situations. So I feel like that also is a really good arc in these books. So even the side characters and the minor characters, they're all getting their own full story arc here. No, I wouldn't say full story arc, but they are participants in what happens in book three. Okay. Yes. So that's all of our top 10 books for the month of October. We had some really good ones. We had some ones that were kind of like losers, Mm -hmm. I would say, maybe. But I will tell you that not only will we be back in November with books, with nostalgic movies, but also we will be reviewing holiday stuff as we watch it. Maybe not all the Hallmark and Lifetime movies. I'm just saying, guys, we just don't want to, don't want to... Make that kind of commitment, but there will be holiday content coming in the next two months, maybe three months. We might go into January, because stay tuned for that, because it's going to be exciting. So thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Lainey on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram, and you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes, and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out.